Hi and welcome to RC Models and this is the fifth in the series looking at converting the Bruder Cat Excavator to full hobby grade radio control. In the first couple of videos we looked at developing linear actuators using lead screws from 3D printers and little N20 gearboxes. In the third one track motors for propelling the excavator along. In the fourth one the continuous turning of the body whilst driving both the track motors and the turntable and in this one we're going to be building and fitting the cylinder for moving the bucket. Just before we get started I thought it might be an interesting thing to do to provide links to somebody else's video in this introduction section. If you're a fellow RC modder and you've got a video that you think the viewers of this channel might like to see I can post a link to a video from your channel in the next one which I make. Let's get started. So as it stands, the bucket has got a range of movement, something like this. Something which I'm quite keen to do is to find a way to get the bucket to actually move further back because I think it'll be able to empty itself closer in. So if you look here, there is still an amount of travel which is not used because it's butting up inside. So I'm probably gonna make my lead screw slightly shorter in order for it to accommodate that. Having had a quick look before I started making this video, I've actually found out how to take this front assembly apart. So I'll just do that. There is a small tab here, which if you lift it up, allows you to remove the bucket. And it goes that way. I'm guessing that it's so that you can put something else on here. I haven't looked into that, I must admit. Perhaps somebody could let me know. And then it's easy enough to get the cylinder off. comes off just like that and just as I did with the top I'm probably going to have to hold it down with tie wraps. Just to give you some idea of the range of movement as it stands the bucket can just about get back to this level here and the limiting factor is actually this part in here which was part of the mechanism for moving the bucket in the original model. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to file down the inside here just to give me a little bit more movement. I said file, but I think I'm going to use the knife. And that just gives us a little bit more. I don't think I can really go down much more than that. And I think that that's fine. Just as with the first linear actuator, which I made, one of the big challenges is going to be to sort out where to put the mic switches for the travel limits. and. And I'm either going to be using the plain variety like this one here, or maybe one with a wheel on it. I'm not sure yet. Rather than mount those on the outside here where they're A, not going to look terribly good, and B, potentially get knocked when I'm digging or covered in dirt, I'm actually thinking that I want to put them inside here if I can. And to use this bar here to actually push the switches with. I would rather not remove any of this material here because I think it's giving strength to where the bucket attaches. So if the micro switch is going to end up somewhere like here, when we're at the bottom of the travel, I'm going to want a way of getting this arm to push on something further way up here. So what I'm thinking is, if I drill a hole as close to parallel as I can, so somewhere about there, like that, and then push a piece of scrap metal rod into it, like so. Well that's going to push down here and at the other end I can actually mount something all the way over here. So both micro switches have been installed. I tried to do this on camera but it was far too fiddly. And so we have the top one here which is for the top of the travel and if you listen you hear a click. And in order to get that to function I actually put a small two millimeter screw in here which can be adjusted later. In order to work out where the one and a half millimeter holes needed to be for this top micro switch, I actually lined it up on the outside like this, drilled through, put in a piece of two millimeter rod and drilled the other one, lining up with the top of this recess here and I did the same on the other side. One side of the micro switch is held in place with a piece of two millimeter rod cut to the right length and pushed all the way through and the other one has got a screw which is slightly over two millimeters i.e. one which would bite on this second hole. I drilled through this piece here and put in a two millimeter bolt and I'm able to adjust that in and out in order to get this just right and you can hear the click right at the top of the treble there 
and so when the bucket moves all the way up just before it reaches the end of its travel there's a click and similarly at the other end I used exactly the same method a piece of two millimeter bar across the top you'll see that I put the other screw here I had to slightly remove some material here I think it's also worth noting I cut another small piece of material out here actually parallel to a marking which is actually on the model already in order to move this across so that this bar here didn't hit and is able to go in and again you can hear the click at the end of the travel I think it's worth getting this stage out of the way quite early obviously I'm going to need to come back and do the wiring this will now give me something against which to try and get the length of the cylinder such that the travel is sufficient to trigger each end. If I can't get it quite as much as this, I'm going to have to start adjusting things. In the first couple of videos, I showed how I installed the linear actuators, but I didn't actually show the building, so in this one, I'm going to go through that process briefly. The starting point is obviously the original piece off the model, and finding a way to get this piece here to go inside there and to take it down to the right size. Taking it down to the right size is something which I'm going to do on the lathe, but you'll see later that once this is installed, it will be perfectly possible for a patient person with a file just to actually file this down to the right size. But using the lathe is by far the easiest method available to me. The first job is to enlarge this hole so that I can actually get that inside. The way which I did the other one and the way in which I'm going to do this is just using a Dremel with a small round sanding piece. Followed by a bit of filing. And then cutting in line with a bit sticking out. That seems to be pretty perfect. Just need to trim this to get it exactly right. That bit there could have been a bit neater. I'll just file that flat. And that looks to be pretty well okay. I've been quite careful to make sure that I don't entirely lose this part up here, but you need to get rid of most of it just to be able to fit the thing in. But here you can see we have a perfect fit all the way around and something for the glue to hold on to. The next job is to bring this down to about the same size as that so so that I don't have to keep taking it on and off the lathe. That's about 15 millimeters so we'll just take this down to 15 millimeters. <laughs> should be just about okay. Yep, I think I'm happy with that. So the next thing to do is to glue this in place, but you want to do it such that when the lead screw is going through, it's actually going through parallel and it's not rubbing on the side or anything. So I'll just get one of these lead screws screwed into it. And that seems to be fitting quite nicely. When I glue it in a few moments, I want to make sure that this is as straight as possible down here and is the same sort of distance from each side so I'm using a couple of scrap pieces of I think it's about one millimeter very thin plywood and then I've got a piece of metal here which I just bent around the back to keep it off touching the plastic at the back there so using this stuff as a jig I'm going to mix some epoxy 
and get it in there. Now I would prefer not to get any glue on the thread, I'm sure it'll come out afterwards. I'm just going to put glue to this side rather than on the plastic itself. As you think about it, it probably doesn't do any harm to give the brass a little sand. Checking that the thread actually looks parallel along here and that looks okay to me and I'll just leave that to dry. So I've left this to dry for about 24 hours and I'll just take the bits of wood out and my spacer and hopefully you can see that the thread is about even and it moves in and out nice and easily. Now the next thing to do is to attach another one of these 200 rpm 6 volt n20 motors i think that this is the speed that i'm going to stick with i may after i've finished experiment with the 600s whilst i think the speed will be better i'm a bit concerned that they won't be powerful enough so i'm going to stick with the 200s for the build in order to stop this rotating around on there i actually make a little cut out i'll try and show you where i'm going to make it and i'll just mark it up I want it to be a fairly tight fit so it's going to be inside that line there and inside that line there so I'll just make a little cut and if you look there's still a very small gap in here and I want to eliminate that. that is sitting pretty perfectly in there yep I'm happy with that and then I'm going to want to trim the whole thing off right at the very end of the motor and that looks as if it's going to be absolutely fine clean everything with some alcohol then get some yellow tape pulling it nice and tight we don't really need any excess on the so I'm just going to chop off Right, I think that's a reasonably neat job and that's certainly not going to come off there. In the final stages I'll probably put a couple of cable ties around which will help tidy the wires as well. Well, I thought it was, but I've just noticed this is butting up on here so it looks like it's going to be Dremel time. Okay, so maybe I wasn't right about having as much leeway as I wanted with the tape, but we've now got this so that it moves all the way. I am quite concerned though that I've significantly weakened this piece here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off and I'm going to fill it with epoxy. I can actually remove this all together and that's what I'm going to try and do here. And I don't think it's going to do any harm to drop some, some thin copper pipe in there as well, just to give it some added strength. I'm sure that this is all belt and braces and the thing will probably be fine without me doing this. But I really don't see any harm and I have taken a lot of material out of the side of it. Might as well put some of the end bits as well and then leave that to set. Well I left this for about a day to fully harden. On the real excavators this piece here is known as the H bridge. Well it's certainly not an H anymore. If you look closely you may notice that I've actually dremeled out an area on each side and I deliberately let this harden first. So with the copper tube in there I'm not really worried about the strength. 
in the meantime I have been working on this piece here and one of the things which I learned when I made the first actuator is that I actually need to put a cable tie around here to stop the motor moving around when it's under strain and having one of these on here stop that from happening but given the very limited amount of space between these two arms here I had to actually make a cutout to accommodate it so I'll just show you how that goes and as you can hopefully see the motor and gearbox move freely up and down now so that's all sorted. The other thing which I attended to while the glue was drying was to solder up the wires on the back of the motor and you'll notice that I've actually got it very flat because there is only a limited space in here and I cut a small slot using a one half millimeter draw bit to accommodate the wires so that they're all out of the way when it's moving. The last thing which I did was I made up a collar out of a scrap piece of plastic tube which I cut a slot into and if I just move it around and hopefully you can see the slot there. So that helps keep these two arms apart here and at the other end they're kept apart with this which incidentally I've cut a slot in already in order to accommodate a cable tie when the time comes. While this piece is off I'm going to take advantage of the situation and I'm going to wire up the micro switches using the wiring from the first actuator to follow. This will be most easily achieved with the boom taken out as per the previous video. So starting with the first diode and this is going to be the positive wire you can see the little silver strip is towards this end terminal and this is the end where the tab for the switch is probably hear that. I actually twisted it round to keep it held in place and then tinning the pre-threaded red wire that goes back to the speed controller and then just stick the two together. I'm trying to keep everything kind of flat and in this direction. Chop off the bit I don't want. There. And then bring it round. That looks like a fairly good place. Again, removing the bit which I don't want. And then lastly, on this micro switch, I'll just solder on the red wire to the motor. So I can now install that into the arm and do the other one. Okay, so that's both of these done per the wiring diagram from the second video, the one on the actuator control. Now at this point here it is worth just doing a quick test and if you wire the motors up in one direction, I'll just do that, you can you can hear it running and one of the micro switches will cause it to slow down because it's putting the power through the diode and the other one will stop it and then if you reverse the wires the same thing will happen except it'll be this micro switch which slows it down and this one which stops it. Now it's perfectly possible that the motor's wired up the wrong way around and I can actually tell that as well. And so I can see that the motor here is moving clockwise and if I put one of these shafts in and I screw it clockwise it means that the lead screw is moving in and when the lead screw reaches the end of its travelling in it will actually push this mic switch here and stop so I know I've got everything around the right way. Now the next thing to do is to put some of this back together again so I'll just put this piece back on making sure I get it the right way around. That's those in and these at the bottom are a little bit easier. That's that. Making sure that both micro switches are still tripping and then I need to put this wire somewhere where it's not going to cause any difficulty. Well after some fiddling around with the wires I actually found that the best place to route the wire from the motor is through underneath this piece here. I've tied it off with a, a cable tie to stop it interfering with the mechanism when it's all the way at the bottom and you can hear both micro switches clicking and the motor has full movement without any strain so hopefully that will be okay a bit fiddly but then a lot of this build was always going to be 
The next thing to do is to cut the lead screw to length and make the holes in it. Having done my measurements, I've actually worked out that I can have the mic switches in those positions with the parts which click them, but only over a very narrow range of length of the lead screw. The length which was acceptable seemed to be between 99 and 95 millimeters. So I'm going to try it at 97 millimeters. Okay, so I've trimmed the lead screw down to 96, 97 millimeters, drilled a three millimeter hole in the end to accept the shaft from the motor and drilled, tapped and put a grub screw in to secure the lead screw to the motor. Before putting anything back together again, I'll just give it a quick test and show you that it's working. That's one way. And that's the other and this will stop twisting around once I've secured it at the end there. In order to secure it, I just need to make a small hole at the end with my one half millimeter draw bit, two holes, fairly close together, and then just saw between the two. And that's gonna allow me to put a tire up around this. I need to do the same at the other end. I certainly wouldn't put the cable tires on until you've got everything working because otherwise you do risk damaging the model I think. So let's get that nice and tight. That's fine. And it's not going to interfere with anything. I don't think. So let's chop it off. Uh, I need to push it out of the way because I know that it will foul on the lead screw. So push that round so and it's definitely not hitting anything then pop one on the other end I can still move okay Drop it off, just move it around a bit, get this all back together. I am going to give it one more test. I just need to wire up this lead screw to another speed controller and install the arm back in the excavator as well as obviously put the bucket on. I'll come back when I've done that. So just before the wife gets back from her shopping and it gets dark, let's give it a quick test. Not a bad range of motion. Good, so that's all working. There was some adjustment to do, but it wasn't too bad, and it was very much a case of testing everything as I went along. I do hope you've enjoyed this part, and you're able to check out the guest channel which I featured in the introduction. Once again, thank you very much for watching.